everyone. I'm Kelly Vaughn. For the last more than 10 years at this point, I've been um, a middle school science teacher and I now teach some high school as well um, in Brooklyn, New York. And in that role, I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of adolescents and pre-adolescents on math topics that are tricky for them. So when I thought about topics and looked through the forums to figure out what would be a useful topic for a tutorial, I wasn't actually surprised to see that certain math topics were giving people trouble. But I was sad and a bit surprised to see people talking about giving up on the class because the math in the first couple of weeks was already really challenging for them. And I was surprised because I would hope that our community would be able to come together and support people who, you know, haven't studied things in a long time or maybe had trouble with it the first time around. Um, and who needs some of that extra support. So I thought that I would take on some of these math topics to try to give people what they need so that it's not the math that gets in the way of their ability to complete the course. Um, all right, so the first topic that I noticed had a lot of comments in the forums came from a quiz question that involved sugar and unit conversions. And while we can't go into the details of that particular problem, I think unit conversions are a great topic for a tutorial because, you know, if you are American and you travel outside of the United States or vice versa, you'll definitely encounter unit conversions like this one. Um, and similarly, even just in cooking and baking, you might come across it. So it's one of those math topics that isn't just for class, it's for real life. And therefore, I think it's worth a refresher. So I found a graphic that I think gives us the um, starting point for some similar questions. And I don't know if the underlying fact here about the number of calories in a gram of sugar is correct or not, but it doesn't really matter for the purposes of this tutorial. So this shows us that one gram of sugar, this little pile, has 3.87 calories in it. So we could ask ourselves two types of questions from this. We could say, okay, well, I have a certain number of piles or of sugar equal in size to this one. How many calories do I have altogether? Or basically, if I have a certain number of grams of sugar, how many calories are in them? Um, for example, 22 grams of sugar equals how many calories? The other type of question is the opposite of that, the reverse. We could somehow measure the number of calories that we've consumed and ask ourselves how many grams of sugar must we have eaten in order to have that number of calories and go that direction. So for example, 120 calories were consumed. How many grams of sugar did I eat? So we'll start with the first type of question in detail and then we'll look back at the other. My first tip is in order to gain a deep understanding of how these problems work, you should simplify any complicated looking numbers. It's hard to think intuitively about 3.87. And what we want is to deeply understand the patterns that work in this problem. So let's change 3.87, round it up to four, which is a much simpler number to think about. We'll come to an understanding of the problem, and then we can go back and substitute 3.87 into our solutions and figure out what the right answers really would be using this conversion factor. But in the meantime, it's better to use a simpler number. The other suggestion I have is to make a table. So here's an example of what that might look like. I'm going to scroll down, catch up with this. Okay. So if we know that one gram of sugar is about four calories, again, using our simpler number, we can ask ourselves, well, two grams would be how many calories? I think you can imagine one pile of sugar is four, so if you had two piles of sugar, you'd have four plus four, or eight calories. And if you imagined three grams or three piles of sugar, that would be four plus four plus four, or 12 calories. Four grams or four piles, is four plus four plus four plus four, or 16 calories. And you're probably starting to say, instead of adding four repeatedly, 
why don't we start to multiply? So we, we notice that 1 times 4 is 4, 2 times 4 is 8, 3 times 4 is 12, 4 times 4 is 16. So we can conclude that we're taking the number of grams and multiplying by 4, and that gives us the number of calories. Or you could write it grams times 4 equals calories. That now gives us what we need to know in order to begin to solve more complex questions of this type where we don't want to, you know, write out the whole table. So for example, 22 grams times 4, 22 times 4 is 88. So if we had 22 little piles, each with 4 calories, we'd have 88 calories. It's a good, great place to begin thinking about whether your answers make sense. So if we know that one gram gives us four calories, we see that our, our number of calories should be bigger than the number of grams we started with, a greater number, right? So is 88 a greater number than 22? Yes. And we also know that it should be about four times bigger, or in this case, exactly four times bigger, but so you can estimate, well, 20 times four would be 80, so 22 times four, 88 makes sense. If we got 8 calories, well, that's smaller than 22. So we can't start with a number of grams and wind up with a number of calories that's smaller, right? That doesn't fit our pattern. So we would know that that was wrong. And similarly, if we got 8,000, well, we're not increasing by the, that large a factor, right? It should be about four times what we started with. This is way too big. So that's another red flag. Okay. In school, you probably learned another way to solve these. But keep in mind that the table is a great place to start. It really helps you develop out what the pattern is in a really simple way. So you could say, you could set up a proportion. This is the other way. So you could say, okay, one gram. Oops, let's go onto another page so we can see the whole thing. One gram, that's too far, <laughs> is to, bear with me, I'm new to the screencasting thing. One gram is to four calories, right? That's our original relationship. As or equals the relationship we're wondering about. So let's say 22 grams is to X calories. All right, so this is what we want to know, how many calories X are in 22 grams if we know that four calories are in one gram. We can now cross multiply. We take the two numbers that are catty corner across the equal sign from each other, 22 and four, and we multiply them. So 22 times four, and then we divide by the third one that's left in the corner. So 22 times four divided by one. That is cross multiplying. Well, 22 times 4 is 88, divided by 1, still 88. So what you should notice is that we still did the same mathematical operation solving it this way as we did using the table. We discovered that our factor that we multiply by is 4, and that our operation is multiplication. So the division by 1 doesn't change that. We're doing the same thing, we're just setting it up in a different way. Now, looking back, if you wanted to solve the original problem, it would be simple to now say, oh, so if one gram really equals 3.87 calories, everywhere where I put in four as a simple number, I should put in 3.87. Well, it's not gonna be 88 anymore. So we open our calculator and clear what's in there now. So 22 times 3.87 gives us 85.14. Again, quick mental check. Does that make sense? Well, it's bigger than the number of grams. So that's great. And it's about four times bigger, right? 20 times four would give us 80. So tw 22 times almost four should be something above 80. Great. 
And similarly, in our proportion, if we knew that it was really 3.87 calories in one gram, we could adjust everything so that we set it up like that. And again, we cross multiply catty corner across the equal sign. So 22 times 3.87 divided by one. That part hasn't changed. And we would get the same result because we're doing the same operation. We're multiplying by 3.87. Oops, okay. So, going down to the other type of problem. Let's say that, oops, take that away. You consumed 120 calories of sugar. How many grams of sugar did you eat? And you know that one gram of sugar equals four calories, or therefore, four calories equals one gram. Again, we're using our simpler number, but it would be very straightforward to put in 3.87 for 4 when we return to this later. Set up a little table. So 4 calories equals 1 gram. So 8 calories equals 2 grams, right? 12 calories equals 3 grams. And already we should see that we're now dividing by 4, right? And because we're using this simple number, the relationship is easy to see. Okay. So we can write our pattern as the number of calories divided by four gives us the number of grams. And so we can solve problems like the one that I posed at the beginning, which was 120 calories is how many grams? So 120 calories divided by four would give us 30 grams. Okay, can we solve that one as a proportion? Absolutely. So we set it up again, we know that four calories is to one gram as 120 calories is to x grams. And I would suggest that you keep your units in your proportion as you set it up. It helps you arrange all the pieces correctly. So it's important to keep the two original parts of the, of the question together. So we know that one gram goes with four calories, and these were, this is the original factor. The question that we're being asked to answer stays together as well. And then you want to have your units matching up. So our calories line up with our calories, and our grams line up with our grams. You can rearrange these, but those rules have to apply. So in our earlier proportion, we had the grams at the top and the calories on the bottom, right? But we still had the original and the problem that we were solving. And we had the grams and we had the calories. You can't just put them in any arrangement. The pieces do have to line up in a logical way. Okay, so again, when we cross multiply, 120 times one divided by four. 120 times one divided by four and lo and behold, we're doing the same math because 120 times one is 120. And what we're really doing is dividing that by four. And so we get 30 grams. And now again, we can ask ourselves if our answers are making sense. And we can think, well, our number of calories was always greater than our number of grams. So we should come up with a smaller number of grams than the number of calories we started with. And in fact, it should be a fourth. So our number of grams is smaller than the number of calories we started with. Excellent. And by one fourth. So that makes sense. And again, if we wanted to use our original information, we can put in 3.87 instead of our simplified problem because we now understand the relationship. So we know we're dividing by 3.87 to solve this. And when we solved it, we would get our correct answer for grams. I'm just about out of time. Thank you so much.